For the last couple of years, Just Life has been talking to us about what it's like to live where I'm living and how the living situation has an impact on my life. I call where I stay a and b Some people call it a private hostel or a guest house. Just Life used the term unsupported temporary accommodation. Not many people know about these places, or they think that places like this are resigned to history, and they also don't know how many of us live here. The official stats say that the number of statutory homeless households placed in B&Bs stood at 4,560 in October to December of 2014. The actual number living in places like this in unsupported temporary accommodation is likely to be five to ten times more than this. Life is hard living here. The landlords can be difficult. A lot of them are dishonest and they never do anything to fix things. I really think that they only care about your top up. Some of us don't have locks on our doors. I don't feel very safe there. Lots of us don't. And it's impossible to get away from all the drugs and alcohol. I'm going to let Stacy and Trevor tell you about their lives in unsupported temporary accommodation. These are real, happening now. And at the time of making this film, Stacy and Trevor are still living there. So my name is Stacey, I moved into a and b I think, uh, June last year. I had my own home before then. It had been mine for 14 years, but unfortunately, my dad, he was living with me, but he, um, he committed suicide. It happened in my home. Everything got really bad after that. I got really depressed and started ignoring everything. Letters, they piled up, I started drinking a lot more, taking more drugs. This went on way too long. Because I ignored everything, my benefits stopped and I wasn't being paid. Then one day I thought, if my benefits aren't being paid, maybe my housing benefit isn't being paid. I called up my housing officer and he came round to help me. This housing benefit lady, she came round too. She had me sign forms and she said we would get everything sorted and she would call me. But... But she never called me. I was evicted a few months later. I didn't have anywhere to go after that. I didn't feel like I could go live at my mum's, so... Well, I just stayed in a bus stop for two months. I didn't sleep for two months, really. I eventually, I met this guy who told me about this place, this B&B, and, and we could both move in there together. I had no idea what it was like. I stayed in my room mostly. I'm worried that if I leave for too long, someone could break in and take something. It's happened before, not since I've lived there, but but you can tell if you just look at the door. There are marks all the way around the door where it's been kicked in. Or so you can see where the landlord has tried to fix it. You can see the marks on the side. All the landlord did, landlord did was take the door off and flip it round to fix it. The lock is this flimsy thing as well. The whole place, it's just shit, really. There were no lights in the hall either, well... There were light bulbs, but the landlord has turned the electricity off. I know it works as well because one day he was down in the cellar working on something and the light in, in my room, it came on. Never since I've lived here has the light come on. All I have for a light in my room is just a light bulb connected to a stick with, with a makeshift cord, junction box and a plug. It doesn't even have a lampshade. One time, one guy upstairs was in a bad state so we had to call an ambulance. The police always come to where I live when we call an ambulance. Um, and when they were trying to get the guy downstairs on a stretcher, the police asked the landlord where the lights was. The landlord told them there wasn't a light bulb, which is why it wasn't working. But they tried the switch anyway because they saw there was a light bulb. The landlord was lying and they told him to deal with it. But he said nothing and he's still done nothing. I don't even go to the loo at night, even if I'm bursting. There are no street light lamps on our road and no lights in the hall. I can't see to get to the toilet when it's dark. There is a step up to get into the toilet and I hit my foot on it every time. The stairs are also so steep. He just doesn't care. I don't think we should be treated like this. You just see what they feed us. Chips and beans, chips and fish fingers, one time came back to my room after getting a plate of food. You see, he handed it to me with another plate on top so I couldn't see what it was. When I took the plate off the top, he'd just given me a plate of beans. That was my dinner. 
a plate of beans. It's so depressing. I don't want to be in here. I have no control on my life. I ran into this guy who lives in here the other day and he told me that he had lived here for eight years. Eight years! I just, I just about collapsed on the spot. I can't live here another year. The thought of eight, I can't even think. I don't think I'll ever get out of here, really. No, no privacy, no control, no hot water, barely electricity. If it feels like my only option is to top myself. So um, I've I've lived here for a long time now. I moved in, I think, in February, two thousand and thirteen. Before I lived here, I had everything. I had a partner, I had a job, I even had a house. Then all of a sudden, my partner left me. I lost my job, then I lost my house. I went to the council for help as soon as all this happened. I told them I was homeless, and then they told me to go to this place. Temporary, they told me. I don't know if you've ever stayed in one of these places before, but it is awful, like really awful. I thought I could handle it if it was only temporary. I mean, six months went by. And that doesn't feel temporary at all. And then a year. Now I've been in there so long I feel stuck. I've even become an alcoholic. I never used to drink as much before I moved in here. And the only thing that really feels temporary about it is, is just living, is that I could be kicked out at any time. Well, you wouldn't believe me, but I've been kicked out 13 times. Every time I've been kicked out, every time, every, to every single time, I'm put back in the same place, again and again. I'm always worried something will happen and I'll be evicted again. Sometimes you don't know what you're evicted for. It's not safe where I live either. You never know who you're going to be put in the room next to you. I'm really worried they may put another alcoholic next to me. I mean, I was furious about it the first time it happened. I've tried to commit suicide six times, so you might have thought I wouldn't care but I'd rather choose who lives next to me. I mean, because you get all types of people in there. It's so noisy. There's so much running around, and I have no idea what's going on. It drives you crazy. You I feel crazy in here. I've been beaten up in this place. Someone even tried to stab me once. Just, I just wasn't ready to come into a place like this. I didn't know what it was like. I needed more help when I moved in. I trusted people pretty much anyway, but it was my friends who kept robbing me. I mean, why do I trust people so much? Why do my so-called friends keep robbing me? You just never know who's going to be living out in there next year. I wish I could make my own decisions about my future. It's hard though. I mean, I don't even know how long I'll live in there. I have hopes and dreams. I, mean, I still have hopes and dreams. I want to be a translator. I want to get back into making art, cooking. It's just, I mean, I can't keep healthy while I'm living there. I've been trying to save money for a deposit, but I just can't. I really don't know what is happening with, next with me. And I can't even think about moving into another temporary place. I mean, really, I just, I'd rather jump out of a window than do that. Just Life have spoken to around 50 of the tenants of unsupported temporary accommodation about their experiences. As well as this, they asked us tenants to share advice with others, with you. What would we say to someone else in our position in living in unsupported temporary accommodation or about to move in? To find out what we had to say, visit the Just Life website at www.justlife.org.uk. And look for, not home, the truth told by tenants.